penguins that way. Hi, Susie here, and my compass tells me if I keep walking in that direction, the way the compass needle is pointing, I'll eventually end up at the North Pole. But can you tell me why a compass needle always points north? A compass makes you go north, south, east or west, so you know which way you're going. Polar bears. I don't know. Makes it um, know where your house is. There's a penguin at the North Pole in Santa. I don't know what it is. The camera shows you where you're going. And it tells you where, when you're lost, it tells you where to go. Some good ideas. But you know, I think the compass needle always points north because it's attracted to ice and snow. And the North Pole is very, very icy. Oh, but the South Pole is too. So that's not right. North Pole. North Pole has polar bears. And the South Pole has penguins. So the compass needle only ever points to bears and never towards penguins. This compass is a bear detector. You don't think so? Hmm. Well, maybe I need to look into this question a little more deeply. <laughs> The key thing about this compass is the needle. There's something special about it. It's a magnet, and it's attracted to other magnets. See how it's attracted to my magnetic personality? Well, let me show you something I discovered earlier. Watch what happens to the compass when I hold a magnet towards it. Instead of pointing north, the compass needle points towards the magnet. And when I take the magnet away, the needle goes back towards north. Hmm. So maybe if I find out more about magnets, I'll be able to work out what's happening with this compass. Let's see. Sometimes magnets attract things and they can have a powerful, attractive force. But what are magnets attracted to? Whoa. Ah, magnets are attracted to fridges. Is that because they are cold, like the North Pole? <laughs> or is something else happening? Well, let's put this magnet to the test and see. I've got a range of things here. We can test them and see if they're attracted to a magnet. If they're not, we'll discard them in a pile here. And if they are attracted to a magnet, we'll put them in a pile here, the winners. And we'll start with the ruler. Nope, not attracted to the magnet, so it's discarded. Now, the safety pins. Yes, they're attracted to the magnet, Winners here. The toothbrush has no attraction. How about the steel wool? Yes, it's attracted to the magnet. This lime is not attracted to the magnet. And these bars are. They're attracted to the magnet. So what do all these things in the winner's pile have in common? They're all metals. So now we know a little bit about what a magnet does, but not how it does it. <laughs> Magnets are attracted to metal. They also have a force field surrounding them. That's a magnetic force field, and one that can't be seen with the human eye, but can be felt by the metals that are attracted to the magnet. So what I intend to do is record the distances at which that force field kicks in on various magnets. I'll record the details on this chart. 
and I'll start with the bar magnet. I've put a safety pin at zero on a ruler and as I move the bar magnet towards it, the force field will kick in and attract the safety pin. And it does it at one and a half centimetres. I'll put that on the record. 1.5 centimetres. And on to the next magnet. This is a small horseshoe magnet. Will its force field be the same? It's getting closer and closer and closer. Yes, it's exactly the same. One and a half centimetres. Let's record that. 1.5 centimetres. And our last magnet, the large horseshoe. What will its magnetic field be like? How big will it be? Oh, wow! This magnet has a force field of 2.5 centimetres. Write that one down. 2.5 centimetres. Hmm. So, what do I know? Magnets attract metal. And that safety pin was a metal. And some magnets have a stronger force field than others. They can pull that safety pin from a further distance. Some magnets have a stronger force field than others. And of the magnets we tested, this magnet was the strongest. So, maybe the North Pole has a really huge magnet. The size of a mountain. No bigger. A magnet with such a strong force field, it can reach all the way from the North Pole to me and my compass needle. So, what do you know about magnets? A lot more than you did before. Car, bye. You know, I've been thinking. Magnets are surrounded by a magnetic force field. And my compass is attracted to a magnet. But there's not a big magnet poking out of the North Pole. So where is the magnet that's attracting my compass? Is it, say, up here? No. Actually, it's below my feet. It is. Way, way, way below my feet. Because scientists believe that the inner core of the Earth, the Earth's centre, is solid and it's made of iron or nickel so it's like a huge big magnet and the inner core's movement against the outer core produces a magnetic field so small floating magnets like the one in my compass align themselves with that big magnetic field of the earth one end pointing north the north pole and one end pointing south the south pole so that's why we can always find where north is. Unless, of course, you've got a magnet close by to your compass and then you could be heading anywhere. Right, well, I'm off away up north. I'll see you soon. Casting fee.